Randall Hughes with GodGlorified.com, and we are wanting to visit today, and we're looking at the question, is the doctrine of the Trinity the best understanding of the God of the Bible? And today we're going to look at some of the key terms, phrases, uh, that are used by Trinitarians to explain and understand the doctrine of the Trinity. And so, here are a dozen terms that are necessary for understanding God is a trinity. Trinity, number one. Number two is persons. Number three is the number three. Number four is God the Father. Number five is God the Son. Number six is God the Holy Ghost. Number seven is three and one. Number eight is distinction of persons. <clears throat> Number nine is co-equal. Number 10 is co-eternal. Uh, number 11 is God in three persons. And number 12 is eternal son. And so these are all terms or phrases that are used to speak of God as a trinity. Now out of those dozen terms, I ask the question, how many of those are explicitly found in Scripture. One of those terms, God the Father, is used about a dozen times in the New Testament. God is spoken of as Father about 17 times in the Old Testament. And so it's interesting to me that the God of creation, the one who created everything, including language, and yet he never chose to use any of these terms to speak of himself. The word three, any translation of the Bible that's come out since 1881 has not contained the word three in reference to God in any way, shape, or form. That is, and let me, I probably need to clarify, that's a literal translation. I'm not, not aware of any paraphrase either, but that's not to say that some of them uh, maybe putting in thoughts that are not from the, the manuscript evidence. There's one verse of scripture in the older translations, the King James, for instance, has 1 John 5, 7, which has, uh, let's just read that very quickly. If you're not familiar with just me saying 1 John 5, 7, what that entails, uh, this is where, this is the only time in any translation that it includes were the number three in relationship to God in any way, shape, or form in any, any Bible. And uh, the manuscript says, I understand it, there's roughly 500 manuscripts of the, the epistle of, of 1 John, and there are only nine of those manuscripts that it contain these words. And of those nine, four of them have it in the margin rather than the flow of the text. And so this is what it's the, the passage reads, how it reads in the Net Bible. It says, there, for there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three are in agreement, is how the Net Bible reads at 1 John 5, 7, and 8. And there's an extensive footnote here that explains how that it came to be, uh, that it was had made its way into the Latin Vulgate, and yet in 15, around 1515, 1516, Erasmus created uh, the first printed Greek New Testament, and in his first edition, he did not include 1 John 5, 7, what is called the Johannan comma, or the three heavenly witnesses. Uh, in, in the comma, it would say something to the effect of, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. That is the passage, the portion that is no is not found in in manuscripts, the majority of the manuscripts, and consequently it's not felt to be, none of the manuscripts are earlier than the 10th century that include it, and so consequently it's not considered to be a valid passage that's a variant reading that had made its way into the text that should not have. And so, as I said, all the new translations, including the New King James may have it in the text, but it includes the footnote that says there's only four or five manuscripts when the New King James came out in about 1982. And so, it's, there's, when you look at the magnitude, 
of manuscripts that do not have it versus the ones that do, and then the fact that virtually half, nearly half, four out of the five, out of the nine, uh, only five have it in the flow of the text, and the other four have it in the margin, it is not considered a valid uh, rendering of scripture. And so that uh, leaves that number three as never associated with God in a manuscript translation. Like I said, there may be a paraphrase that may use uh, some of these terms or one of the terms, but it's not used in a Bible that's a word-for-word -word literal translation or even a, a near dynamic equivalent. And so those terms, not found in Scripture, 11 of the 12, and yet the God that created language could have, he had it all language at his disposal, and yet he chose not to use those terms. And so that's something that makes me think that the Trinity is not the best understanding of the God of the Bible. And so we'll look more at additional points that we feel are, are critical to knowing and understanding the God of the Bible. I love you and say God bless you and may everything we do give glory to God. Hope you've subscribed and that you continue to watch this series for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, God bless you.